Last week, I got a birthday card from my son, Corey, and in that card, he told me how much he had appreciated a day that we spent together last fall at the Renaissance Festival. I have a tradition of spending a day alone with each of my sons where they get to choose all of the activities that we do together. I started this when they were in elementary school, and now they are both in their 20s. Corey's favorite thing to choose is this festival. The Renaissance Festival is a reenactment of the Renaissance era. It's a time to step back in time. All the vendors are in costumes. The music is played on flutes and harps and drums. Nothing is electronic. There are knights and horses. It's the same thing every year, but we just love it. And what Corey said in his card to me was that it was the one day when he felt like a kid again. Reading between the lines, I heard that he was reminded of carefree days before the stresses and worries of being an adult were his everyday reality. He was brought back to a time when a parent took care of all the hard stuff. Have you noticed that our storefronts, our TV commercials, and toy manufacturers are all trying to get us to feel like a kid again? We see commercials this time of year with families gathered around perfectly decorated Christmas trees, sipping hot cocoa, wearing the latest styles from L.L. Bean, while a gentle snow is falling all around. Everyone is smiling with bright white teeth. I remember shopping for my children's presents and seeing toys on the shelves that I had when I was a kid. I just had to buy the rock'em, sock'em robots and the hungry hippos that I got to play with. The toy manufacturers bring back these vintage toys with a new sparkle to bring back a certain feeling in the parents who are the ones with the credit cards. Forget about the bills, your job, your worries and cares. Our products will bring you back to the good old days when life was simple, when someone was looking out for you so you could just be free to play. Of course, we aren't all Peter Pans who never grow up. Eventually, we all discover that toys wear out. The people in the commercials are just acting. Life isn't so perfect simple and carefree. When the innocence of childhood gets lost, it can feel like we're all on our own now. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that these feelings are nothing new. The words we read together are a lament from people who have had their hopes shattered. These are people who once knew without a doubt that God was their faithful, loving father the one who fashioned them and created them. But now they were experiencing ruin, conflict, and famine. They felt like God had abandoned them. They were recalling times when they were more certain of God, when they felt that God was near and active. And when he was watching over them, protecting them, surprising them even, with an awesome presence that no one could deny, not even their enemies. Isaiah cried out to God, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. It's easy to lose hope when our world is filled with war, food insecurity, polarization, climate crisis, and so much hurt. It causes us too to wonder, where is God? And calamities out in the world are one thing, but Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Without hope, we turn to false gods to take care of us, and I'm guilty of this too. Without hope, we reach for the approval of our peers. Maybe you have looked for comfort in the number of likes and friends that you find on social media, or in how popular you seem at school or work or in social settings. But popular opinion is fleeting, isn't it? Without hope, we attempt to numb our pain 
with things like shopping, substances, food, or gambling, you name it. But we find that what we reach for never fully satisfies. Those highs don't last. Without hope, we have trouble admitting that we are wrong or that we need help because if we reach out, we fear that we might be rejected or burdensome. While the people in Isaiah's time felt like God had deserted them, they sinned. They became unclean like filthy rags. Isaiah says that no one attempted to take hold of God. They reached for other things instead. They lost hope in God, their creator and parent. Have we lost that hope as well? Does God seem distant to you? In his last days before going to the cross to wipe out sin and death, Jesus addressed the issue of trials and tribulations and God's seeming absence. He warns his hearers that they will hear of disasters and calamities, and this will cause them to wonder when God will come to set all things right. Jesus says, no one knows when that will be, not even the Son. But this is not cause to lose hope, Jesus says. We can take a lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. I can't help but make a connection between the word tender and God's nearness. Have you ever had a tender spot? Maybe you became bruised in some way, and that place was tender and sore. You were vulnerable there. Perhaps you even tried to protect it from being touched. Advent reminds us that God is not absent in our suffering. He did indeed tear open the heavens to come down. God became vulnerable in the tender form of the Christ child so that he could understand our hurts and heal them when his own body would be broken and bruised for our redemption. It's a beautiful thing that Jesus so urgently hopes for us to be awake to welcome him in our own lives and in the lives of our neighbors. I'd like you to take a moment to think of a time when you just knew that God was near. I'll share a few of those times from my life to help you get thinking. For me, it has been with Christian friends who make it easier for me to make godly choices in my daily life. There is healing hope in accountability. It was when someone admitted that they had been wrong and asked for forgiveness, and I did the same so that our friendship could be renewed. There is healing hope in the restoration of relationships. And for me this past week, it was when I joined others in my neighborhood in a search for a missing person. So many people showed up with cars, boats, and airplanes. And when the search revealed that he had taken his life, there were countless words of love and support shared among people. And I was especially touched by an aunt's eulogy at the funeral. She said that we need to be helpers and we need to let people help us. We can't get stuck in one role or the other. We need both. When you experience scary emotions and lose sight of hope, hold hands and walk through it together. There is healing hope in community. And for me, it was in a card expressing gratitude. There is healing hope in love. This is how we keep awake and alert to the gift of hope. We move toward the tender spots, just like Jesus does for us. That's when leaves of connection begin to spring forth. 
The proverb says, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. As we wait for Jesus to return in glory, we servants of God have a job to do. We have been molded for a purpose, to be agents of God's healing hope. If it seems that God is absent in our world, perhaps it's because God's servants have gotten sleepy or distracted. Is it time for a wake-up call? Maybe this Advent season of ours has some things in common with the Renaissance Festival. It has its own familiar music, like O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We see people in costumes, shepherds, angels, wise men. It's a reenactment of a time long ago. And like my son felt at the Renaissance Festival, Advent can also be a time to remember our childhood, our child of Godhood. Children of God, you are dearly loved, never abandoned, intimately cared for, and so desperately needed in this world. God is the potter, we are the clay. The God who made you knows the healing that you need. What a gift of hope. Stay awake to welcome it. I invite you to stand as we welcome Jesus with our voices and sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> 